Hello and welcome to Travel Explore Celebrate Life. This is your host Sunila Patil and I'm so happy to welcome all of you today. Neil has taken a break for this episode but we have a very special guest from down under and I can't tell you how thrilled I am that she's agreed to do this podcast with me today because it's something so exciting and so close to all our hearts in India that uh, you know we, we we skip our hearts skip a beat every time our team goes out there and we have our guest today is Gail Dwyer Gerard and she's the tour coordinator at SCG the Sydney Cricket Ground welcome Gail Thanks, Sunila. I'm so excited to be here and to have a chat with you. It's such a privilege. So hi to everyone. And um, I'm looking forward to chatting about all things SCG and about Australia and India. So, yeah, I'm, I'm so happy to be here. Yes, Gail. Gail, you know, like cricket is so close to our hearts. Like they say in India, cricket is a religion. And I think one of the things that really holds India and Australia together is cricket. And then with IPL, we often have a lot of other players in our teams as well. And we kind of really become very fond of them. Uh, I have seen myself, the kind of fan following that the Aussie cricketers get in India is so much more maybe than what is what they ha- experience in Australia itself also. So when they, when they come here, they're really treated like gods and we love it. We love them. We love the whole game of cricket. And I'm so excited because Sydney Cricket Ground is something that probably, you know, most Indians have maybe missed out on their itineraries to Australia. But there are so many reasons to go there. And I think I'm I'm so happy that we're going to be speaking about all of that today, because almost everyone goes to New South Wales and Sydney from Australia, I mean, from India, when we visit Australia. And, uh, you know, when we are in Sydney, if we can go and see the place where so many greats have played, they've played some fantastic matches. If if we can actually step out there, it would be such a privilege. Uh, like we were speaking of it, Gail, we know that Sydney Cricket Ground uh, has a lot of history. It's also a cultural heritage in that kind, isn't it? Mm-hmm. So if, if I remember right, when we spoke about it, you said that the first cricket match started way back in 1854, so it, there is a lot of like living history out there at Sydney Cricket Ground. Let's let's talk about that. Yes. Yeah, so a lot of people don't realise actually we're the the oldest first class cricket ground in Australia, and we have a really long history. And as you just said, first cricket match was held here in 1854. Uh, how we became here, you know, the SCG to be in the land it is, mm-hmm. is thanks to really the English army. So they came out in the 1840s, we're a colony just like you guys, and Mm -hmm. they wanted to bring their their games to uh, their colonies as they did. The new land, yeah. Yeah, they thought it would gentrify us. It didn't really work, but Mm -hmm. anyway. um, So it was a a barracks which is about 500 metres away and it's still a working barracks today. Mm -hmm. And this North Devonshire Regiment was here and they said, look, we want to play cricket. There's not enough room here. So they were given this land, which uh, is about, as I said, 500 metres away from the barracks. And it's a very swamp, was a very swampy land. So it took them a few years to get it up to scratch to play. And it was called the Civil and Military Ground then. It wasn't known as the SCG then. Uh, And we had intercolonial matches here from New South Wales against Victoria. Um, And so, as I said, 1854, very first match. And uh, it later became came the SCG in 1894 but through that period of time from the first match through we've had a number of pavilions that have come along our very first Mm -hmm. members pavilion was 1877 but it's no longer standing but our members pavilion which is so iconic that everyone I'm sure would recognize worldwide if you're a cricket fan uh, was built in 1886 now that members pavilion is heritage listed and 10 years after that we had the ladies' pavilion. So as the Indians may have ladies' uh, train carriages and different things yeah. for ladies, we had a ladies' pavilion. And there's a great yeah. stories around that, why we have it, and some of the antics that went on. But the members' pavilion also holds our change rooms. Now, you talked about living history. We're the only mm-hmm. cricket ground in Australia that has managed to retain living history. Um, and those change rooms that they used back in the 1880s are still the same change rooms that the boys and the yeah. girls use today. 
So mm -hmm. when you visit us and you walk through the members' pavilion, you'll get goosebumps because if you're a real fan, fan and so many of Indians are, you're stepping or sitting where the great Sir Donald Bradman sat, where wow. Sunil Gavaskar sat, and many mm -hmm. other greats. So it really has a very special feeling. That's fantastic. And you're talking of the, of the you know, changing rooms, and I'm sure there are a lot of stories hidden out there. Some we'll know, some we'll never know. But I'm hoping that we can hear a few of them from you later on in the episode, Gail. Uh, uh -huh. But I, I want to still talk a little bit more about the construction of the SCG and when it was being made. And we know now that it is a heritage structure. So when we are visiting SCG, um, you know, you could even go in and see a match today. But you, every time you step in, you know that, wow, this is from the 1854. It was the first match and we are actually seeing and visiting something that's so historical. Uh, you mentioned Don Bradman as well. And Gail, I heard a story because the SCG is not just about cricket. It is also about football. It is also about rugby and cycling as well. And I remember reading somewhere that somehow Don Bradman's father was actually involved in building of the cycling track or something like that. And it really made me wonder, wow, that's something else. That's an angle we never think of. So is that true? Was Don Bradman's yeah, father? Really no, that involved? is true. That is very true, surprisingly. So Don Bradman is from New South Wales. He was born in a small country town and moved to Barrel, which is about an hour and a half away. Mm -hmm. But his dad did work in a team that put in this amazing cycle track. And as you said, Sunila, we had, we've had many different types of sport played here. We've had Empire Games, which is the Commonwealth Games, football, cycling, even tennis. We're the oldest uh, lawn tennis association, association in Australia. So we've had lots of different sport. But this um, cycle track was put in in 1896, the same year the Ladies' Pavilion was uh, unveiled and opened. And he helped build this big cement cycle track that, uh, was on the inside of the boundary, basically. And it was there until after the First World War. So Bradman's dad also had an association with this ground. It's quite uncanny. And actually, Don Bradman first came to watch a match when he was 12 years old. He and his dad came up from the Southern Highlands and he came mm -hmm. to watch the fifth, the last day of the fifth test match. And it was an Ashes test match, Australia, England. Mm -hmm. And he was so excited, apparently, and he saw this great batsman called Charlie McCarthy score 170. And he said to his dad, apparently, that, oh, my gosh, I want to do that. That's really what yeah. I want to do. I'm going to score a century at the SCG. And boy, you know, did he go on from there. So there's been a close relationship with the Bradman family for many, many, many years. So, wow. yeah. That is really, it's it's uh, like you said, it's something unbelievable, right? Like he, his father actually built, was part of the team that really went mm. into building the stadium. It's, it's really amazing. But uh, Gail, Don Bradman for all of us is, is a legend, for everyone is a legend. And like you said, he came in, he said he wants to play there and and I think he's, you know, just recreated history in, in a way. Um they say that SCG is a batting pitch, right? It's good for like really the batsman. And we've seen that happen. So can you tell us a little bit more about Don Bradman's, uh, you know, his his love for the SCG and yeah. what did he do there? Well, he, you know, this was his home ground. As I said, he was from New South Wales. Mm -hmm. And he played many years here, of course, both Sheffield Shield, which is like your Runji Cup there. Right. Um, and then obviously for the in test matches. Um, they didn't obviously have other international matches at that time, ODIs or T20s. But he, uh, as a 22-year-old, he was playing in our Sheffield Shield match. And it's an interesting story because in the first innings, we, we were actually playing Queensland, New South Wales against Queensland. And he was sent out in his first innings as the opening batsman. Now, everyone knows that wasn't his favourite spot. We don't know why mm. he was sent out of, as uh, opening batsman. Maybe the opening batsman was not well. Yeah. Who knows? Mm -hmm. Who knows? Mm -hmm. But out he went, out he trotted and thought, OK, I'll give it a go. <laughs> and um, he didn't do well, actually. He only scored three off eight balls. And it's like, oh, dear. So second innings come around. He went back to his favourite number three. 
he scored 452 not out. <laughs> and uh, I mean, that's a score and a half. That's a team mm -hmm. score, let alone an individual score. He was, the Queenslanders were even so thrilled the other team, they picked him up, mm -hmm. they put him on uh, their shoulders, <laughs> marched him around the ground because they knew that this guy was really something very, very special. special. And that world record hung on for many years. Uh, Lara beat it and uh, Ahmed from uh, Pakistan, but 452 not out. It's mm -hmm. immortalised on one of our walls in the newest stand, uh, which is the Noble Bradman stand, named after him and honouring him. And, then, and an, then another amazing performance at the ground was in 1947-48, when the Indian team came out to Australia, yes. the first time mm -hmm. as an independent country, mm -hmm. we welcomed uh, you know, the Indian team. We were thrilled to have them. And um, they were thrilled uh, because Lala Amanath was the Indian captain there and Donald Bradman was our captain. Now this was going to be Donald Bradman's last series in Australia. He was at the end of his career and only went on to do uh, an away series in England, which later became the Invincible mm -hmm. series where Australia didn't get yeah. beat. So John Bradman, Lala Armanath, there's an image of them tossing the coin to see who would bat mm -hmm. first. So John Bradman uh, went into a game, he was on 99 first-class centuries. Wow. Imagine that, 99. Wow. And there was a first-class match. It wasn't a test match. But it was a first-class match against mm -hmm. India here at the SCG, 99 centuries. Now, Lala Amanath was so excited. I think he thought, wow, we have an opportunity mm -hmm. to go down in history. How good <laughs> will that be? Now, cricket in those days were... It was really a gentleman's sport. You yeah. know, there was not the sledging as we have okay. now. And it was really gentlemanly. Yeah. So how it played out was that uh, Don Bradman was coming in. He was coming into bat and they were excited. 99 centuries, could he do it? And as Bradman approached his century, his 100th century, uh, Mr. Armanath uh, supposedly or reportedly took off his first-class bowlers, his second-class bowlers. Mm -hmm. He brought on a bowler that hadn't even bowled the whole series uh, to, in a way, guarantee, if he could, that Bradman mm -hmm. would make his 100th century against India. So I think if it was going to be today, they would the captain would say, bring in our best bowlers, <laughs> bring in the field, yeah. let's squeeze yeah. him out. But no, Lala did not do that. And, of course, Bradman got his centuries, 100th century. India went down in the record of, you know, against uh, Don Bradman. And who caught him on 172? Lala Amanath. Wow. He caught him. Wow. I don't know if Bradman chipped it up to him and, you know, I'm not sure, wasn't there. But, you know, what a story. It was a whole yeah. lovely story. First off from Amanath being so excited to Bradman and, you know, we have an inscription on, in the Bradman uh, Pavilion and he says, in all my experiences on the field of play, this was the most exhilarating moment, playing against India and scoring my 100th century. And the applause of the, cloud, the crowd was just, you know, so exhilarating. So it's written up here. Um, and we love that, that uh, quote from him. And, of course, the first time that India played here. So Bradman such a rich rich history and you'll see his name up on the honor board you'll see his uh scorecard in the home change room mm -hmm. yeah yeah Gail that really was a very interesting story and uh even when you were talking about it I was I was like transported back in time and I'm thinking that it was it was so fantastic we had this movie called 83 which uh, of course speaks about the World Cup and when India won the World Cup. When you watch the movie itself, you get goosebumps and listening to you talking about Bradman and the Bradman stand out there, it, it's really amazing. You know, SCG has always also been the favorite for a lot of Indian cricketers. And when we speak of the cricketing legends uh, of, uh, of India who played there, 
we cannot not talk of Sachin Tendulkar, of course. And I do know that you have some stories of Sachin at the SCG, which all our viewers are dying to listen to. Probably they don't know about it. Uh, of course, we'll speak of his batting and uh, his skills, but there is also a story about the dining table. So I would love to hear all of that from you, Gail. Well, Sachin is one of your gods there, you know, yes. cricketing gods, and we love him here too. And he said you know, all through after his career that the SCG is his favourite ground outside of his home ground, really. And why is it his favourite mm -hmm. ground? Well, when you have a, a, an average of 157 mm -hmm. at a ground, no wonder yeah. it's one of his favourite grounds. Like he <laughs> just expelled, you know, right from his debut in 1991. You know, he came here as a young 18-year-old man. I know he had debuted against Pakistan, but his first time to Australia. And I can imagine, you know, coming to the SCG, it's a packed house and he goes out to take his place at the wicket. And, you know, that first innings he scored, 148 not out. Um, they wow. say it's one of his best ever. Imagine at 18 years old. Yeah. And lots of great stories with that because, you know, cricketers are superstitious. We all know, mm. you know, when they yeah. put their left foot on the field to play first or their yeah. right or like Steve Waugh always had his lucky red hanky in his pocket, whatever it is. So yeah. such an, as an 18-year-old, he was very, you know, um, he respected the older players and the senior mm. players very much. So when you came in and hopefully when your listeners get a chance to come, You'll see there's a dining room in the front part of the... the I was table. about to ask you that will they be able to see that place as well? So oh, of course. Of course, of course. They are. Okay. You, you can't okay, come to the SG and not see oh. that. It's, okay. That's where you really get the goosebumps. So there's yeah. a dining area and where we have the honour boards. And actually we have these other boards, which are called the non-official honour boards, which is, that's a whole nother story. And but I'll get back mm. to such and first. So he sat at the dining table to wait for all the senior players to take their lucky spot or the spot mm -hmm. they sat in last. So he was very respectful. Yeah. And finally, everyone took their seat and he walked through. There was one seat left in the house, one seat only. Thought, okay, I'll sit there. That's the seat. Uh -huh. Actually, yeah. it's not the best seat. It's right in front of the, bar the, the bathroom. Bathrooms. Uh, okay. But he took that anyway. That sits the only seat available, the washroom. And... Um, he sat there, out he went for his inning. He scored 148, not out. Do you think he went back there the next time and said, right, that's my lucky seat? So he sat in this same spot his whole career here, his last wow. time, 2012, from 1991, right through, because it was a lucky seat. In his test matches, you know, 148, 241, 157, all not out. It's yeah. a very lucky spot for him. So when the guests come and we're telling them these stories, you know, oh, we always make it a bit of a guesswork, like, okay, guys, let's see who can find the lucky Tenduka spot. And mm -hmm. uh, so uh, everyone wants to take a photo where Tenduka sat, of course, like, you know, of one course. of their favourite players of all time. And we have other amazing stories of him and Ganguly about him taking a nap on our dining table because, you know, he was up the night before he had to play practicing as he would in mm -hmm. front of the mirror till 2 a.m. Um, so he got up because it's just not enough space in our uh, our um, change rooms. It's, these are there. all historic rooms, of yeah. course. So <laughs> They're not, not like really, the modern day yeah, rooms yeah, that yeah. have yeah. rooms. So he's like, well, I've got a nap somewhere. I need a little bit of a snooze mm -hmm. before I go out. So the dining tables must be really comfortable because that's when he scored his 148 not out. Oh, so, wow. you know, um, yeah. there's many, many, many stories. And what's wonderful now is that we have a gate dedicated to him. Um, yeah. uh, Lara and Tenduka, the great Brian Lara as well. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, as every player from an away team uh, goes down to the field of play, they have to pass this gate um which is the Tenduka Lara, Lara gate and it was only unveiled this year uh in their honor on actually Tenduka's 50th birthday on April 24th oh, wow. 
Yeah. So we wanted to immortalize him somehow. Um, and so people get to walk past, take a, a, a photo there in front. On our side, on the home change side, we have the Bradman Gate. So one side mm -hmm. we have the Bradman Gate, on the other, the Tendulkalara Gate. So, yeah, you know, we immortalized, we immortalized him and we cherish him as much as you guys as well. So, yeah. That's that's really uh, very nice, Gail. And I'm just thinking of, of everyone who's visiting there. So if, you know, when our tourists and when people come into Australia and they come into Sydney and they come to the SCG, I'm sure they will have the guides around to take them around. And the guides would tell them these stories and make uh, the entire tour really interesting. So I'm just thinking it would be so amazing to go into the dining room. And I can't believe that I have myself not visited the SCG in spite of so many trips to Sydney. So the next time there, I promise you, I will come and see you at yeah. the SCG. And we had to go to the dining table and see where was it that Tendulkar actually slept on the dining table or <laughs> he he happened to sit on the chair and uh, facing the bathroom. So, you know, nothing's really bad. I mean, even if it's probably the least wanted seat, it turns out lucky <laughs> for someone who's so, so talented and that becomes his lucky spot in, in the dining table. So I'm, I'm sure there's going to be a queue out there to come in and see that. Well, because, I hope so. Uh, yeah. It would be lovely. We look we love to welcome our guests and we take great pride in our customer. We're very customer focused. We want your visit to the ground from the very moment you walk through the front door to the time you leave to be special, something that you can keep in your mind forevermore. And um, I have a great team of guides, they're professional guides. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, it's a thrill for them. It's so funny when you hear them come back from a tour, they're like, oh, that was amazing. It was so mm -hmm. fantastic. And I think everyone loved it. Like they're so uh, engaged in it themselves. So mm -hmm. we, um, as we spoke about earlier, we have played many different sports here, but we gauge and we engage with our guests mm -hmm. and we determine we have Indian guests on our tour. There are going to be lots of cricket stories. Cricket they're stories. going to be yeah. Centric Indian stories. We'll be telling you about Tenduka. We'll be showing you his place that he sat and um, one of my my favorites, Dravid. We, you know, there's lots of different stories yeah. where he slept on the table. So we we take great pride in that. We want to engage you. We want to make sure you have the best time possible and to take memories from here home and to tell people you've got to go because. You'll just love it. You know, you'll, you'll just really yeah. enjoy your visit. And I think I think that's the best way to see a place, right? When you go in there and you find that one thing that appeals to you and when you hear some things being said about your country and your cricketers, it just makes the trip so much more worthwhile. It makes it so much more interesting and engaging. But Gail, I remember you, you also mentioned that uh, at the SCG, when you come in, you have the member stand and then you have a separate lady stand. And then there's also the SCG museum, which is close to the lady stand, right? And I think you have yeah, some. Right. So You're so right. would the museum always have some exhibits on and can people go and see those? Yes. So we have exhibits on all the time um, and we rotate them. But something actually, which is really lovely, and I'm sure your, your listeners will love, is that we have a dedicated area um, to India, to we love um, coming, you know, the Indian team coming. We love our, the Indian guests coming in. And they're the only away team or country, cricket country, to have their own dedicated exhibit area in our museum. Oh, wow. And we change that up. But, you know, at the moment we have some uh, this history of Indian cricket there. We have Shastri's vest. Coley's gloves. Mm -hmm. The 2011 100th Test match here uh, was against India. We have some commemorative things there. We have our calicos that were on the historic scoreboard with uh, Bisham Bedi, uh, Lala Amanath. So there's some really amazing things there. And this is in uh, the ladies pavilion which was built in 1896, as I was saying, it's also heritage listed and it's at the back of that. And remarkably, it used to be a tea room for the ladies. So the ladies would oh, only yeah. be allowed to go to the members, uh, the ladies' pavilion and the men to the members' pavilion. Um, and so 
they built the ladies this lovely tea room, which in 1977 was converted into a museum. Now you can only come to the museum uh, if you remember on a game day or as a part of our our behind the scenes okay. tour. Yeah, so it's a part of the tour. And our tours, our public tours, as we like to call them, uh, uh, we run almost every day. The only day we don't uh, is mm -hmm. on major ga game or event yes. days when we're not a, a permitted to do it. But every other day, Monday through Sunday, we have a few tours per day. Um, and you can book, th obviously, through Vena World. Yes. <laughs> and, um, yeah. and, you know, uh, it's n about a 90-minute experience. Sometimes we go okay. over a bit because... Okay. Depending we get on so the interest, excited yeah. about our story. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's quite and, similar to us going overboard. We we just decided we'll do a short one today, but just listening to the stories, you just don't want to stop and you want to keep listening to the stories. So I'm sure the same thing happens when people visit SCG. Exactly, so. exactly. You know, one story leads to another story and about, especially about the Indian team and of course the ashes and there's so many fantastic uh, mm -hmm. in. Indian and, and cricket stories here, uh, here. yes. Well, that's fantastic. So, you know, uh, we had the Vina World group there and they were really happy with their visit at the SCG. Um, I think it's a, it's a fabulous place to come in and relive your cricketing moments, cricketing history as such. And you mentioned that you have your guides, you have a guided tour. So you actually have someone taking you through and you mentioned about 90 minutes is what someone should yes. account for, right? And it has to be always pre-booked if I'm right, correct? You That's can't right. just walk in and take a, uh, and enter. It would be better to pre-book the... It's better visit. to pre-book because we're often booked out and uh, as we do have a few tours a day, but they're often booked out. So I know, you know, we've had visitors from India. Uh, I've seen them on the field of play and they're crying and they're videoing and they're saying this mm -hmm. is a lifelong dream. And I'd hate it if someone was coming to yeah. see us and they missed out um, because we were booked out. So it's a really good idea to pre-book it. Absolutely. And, you know, listeners like Sydney, it's not a trip that you would just wake up and read Sydney. You need to prepare for it as well. You need to really plan your Australia holiday uh, very well and reach there. So make sure that SCG is a part of it because it's something I think that would appeal to all of us who love cricket. Gail, we are coming to the closing of our episode. Is there anything else you want to say or was there someone really famous that you were a fan of and you happened to meet or uh, oh, anything yeah. else that you want to close the episode well just closing um yeah we didn't get to um, got off the track of that but the great late Shane Warne he uh was a favorite yeah. cricket of mine I think of many people around the world and yes. coincidentally his debut for Australia was uh the the, the test match where uh, our lovely Tenduka he debuted here too in 1991 so it wasn't such a great match for Warney he oh, did come wow. on to take mm -hmm. the the most wickets here for um, a Australian uh, team member or a bowler. He took uh, 64 wickets. So uh, he's also immortalised in our change rooms as well. So he he actually debuted here for Australia and he retired here as well. And the other amazing thing here, and viewers would have uh, seen this, is we're known as the pink test. So we have the test match, the New Year test match, and it's the Jay McGrath Foundation and the Pink Test known now. And uh, that's a spectacle. So if anyone gets down as well in the new year time, come down and uh, get a ticket to come to the test match and then come and see us at the SCG. Um, and just in my closing remark, I, as you know, Sunila, I have a connection to India. I lived there for yes. a number of years. It's very close to my heart. I love the Indian people. They're so hospitable. And um, we like to return that hospitality. So we try to, I've tried to replicate that here at the mm -hmm. tours and greet our lovely Indian guests and all our other guests, in fact. So we hope um, when people come to Sydney, they will think to come and visit us. Our point of difference from other cricket grounds here in Australia is our living history. Other grounds yeah. don't have that anymore. They're modern stadiums. Mm -hmm. So give us a go, come and see it. You won't be disappointed. And Sunila, you have to come and visit us. Yes. 
Yes, Gail, it is definitely on my list. The next visit to Sydney, I will be there. And I'm sure that all of viewers and our listeners would love to come in and, you know, come to the Sydney Cricket Ground the next time that they are in Sydney. Thank you so much, Gail. This was really, it was exciting, thrilling and entertaining at the same time because these are some stories that are hidden in the changing rooms of uh, <laughs> of these great cricket grounds. So it's it's fantastic to listen to it from someone who, who works actually out there. Who That is your office, right? You are right yes, now I'm at the Sydney Cricket Ground. I'm at the so, Sydney Cricket Ground, yeah. Right here behind the ladies' pavilion, right near the museum. So, yeah, it's a great place to work. I love working yeah. here. Great. So, viewers, that was Sydney Cricket Ground for you. And uh, definitely it has to be a part of your next Australia trip. So until then, we will keep coming back to you every week with new episodes on Travel Explore Celebrate Life. And do write to us. Let us know what else it is that you would like to listen to. My email is sunila at wienaward.com, S-U-N-I-L-A at wienaward.com. And Neil's email is neil at wienaward.com. That's N-E-I-L at wienaward.com. But Gail, once again, thank you so much. This was fantastic and it was great to have you here. Oh, thanks, Sunila. It was a pleasure and I was so excited, as I said. So looking forward to welcoming you and yes. uh, other guests. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Keep listening Bye. to Travel Explore Celebrate Life. Bye.